Hey guys, it's on Maxwell here and welcome to another edition of We Are Wrestling. Today is our big event, waking me up when September ends because it's the last week of September and I thought, why not give it that name? Uh, of course we have half the roster missing, same as the last show because it is a double taping of the TV taping and the show itself. So, cards a bit all over the place but we'll try and make it as spectacular as we can and hopefully give you a good show with some storylines going forward. The arena's booked, same as the last time. So hopefully we get a good attendance and hopefully we have a good show. So thanks for watching guys. Here we go. It's We Are Wrestling. Wake me up when September ends. So 968 have turned up to the Sir Matt Busby Centre. It's okay. Not too bad. We start off in an extremely poor match. Stevie Boy, Stevie Xavier defeats Pavel Kirkin in 6 minutes and 55 with a cartwheel leg drop. E27, nothing spectacular, just a match to put Stevie Boy over on the pre-show. Pavel is improving his technical skills, which is good, and negatives here, well, I think you can tell that Stevie Boy is a lot better than Pavel Kirkin, so we'll work on him as time goes on. We start the show with our general manager, as we have Mad Bravix in the ring to introduce the show. Hello you cocky pricks in attendance tonight, how are you all doing tonight? Now like we are wrestling our time, we are missing a lot of talents, but because I am such an awesome general manager, like much better than any of what you could be, I have put together a card of epic proportions. We have so many mega matches with big implications, a women's title match, and the winner of our main event getting a future WAW Heavyweight Championship match. So enjoy the show, you cocky pricks. We are wrestling, we are wrestling, we are wrestling. He chance to try and get the crowd on his side, despite the fact he's just called them a bunch of cocky pricks. E24. Not too bad from Mad Bradix. Again, he's somebody that will continue to build up over time uh, because of his lack of pop in the UK. Our opening contest actually scored pretty well and a lot better than I thought it would. In a match that had average crowd reaction and some decent in ring action, we had Rhino defeat Big Demo, Damien O'Connor, in 10.47 by count out. A very good D42. I was expecting maybe a 39, 38 maybe, but a 42 and a D is pretty solid. Good chemistry between these two, so that's uh, something to build on in the future. Big Demo's improving his performance skills. Negatives here, mostly for Big Demo, but I think over time he can only get better and better. I want to say he's somebody that struggles with stamina. I think he's, despite being a big guy, you know, he's a, a phenomenal athlete and the guy can do stuff at his size that people that size shouldn't be able to do, quite frankly. Next up, now I struggle to think of something for a Joe Hendry entrance. Uh, the only connection I could think of with Rockstar Spuddy's tag partner for this match was Hey there, you're a rock star. So we're ready for our next match when we basically get the lyrics to that. So when it says, Somebody once told me the world's gonna roll me, I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. She was looking kind of dumb with her finger and her thumb in the shape of an L on her forehead. So just playing out the song, get the first chat, uh, the first verse it. Second verse, where well, the years start coming and they don't stop coming, fed to the rules and I hit the ground running. Don't make it. Basically just can throw this, I'm not going to read it out. You, you, if you've heard the song before, you'll know where I'm coming from, it was in Shrek. But basically the plan is, who could it be, you know, he's like, who's this kind of guy? But when he goes, hey now, you're an all-star. Set your game on, go play. Joe Hendry comes out for the curtain. And then that next verse where it goes, hey now, you're a rock star, get the show on, get paid. That's when Rockstar Spud comes out to the part where it says Rockstar. And then they finish the song with, uh, and all that glitter is gold, only shooting stars break the mold. There you go, you have Joe Hendry and Rockstar Spud out. I don't think it's creative, but you know, it's just when I thought Rockstar, and I remembered Rockstar was a, a keyword in that song. And I thought, let's do the Joe Hendry entrance, bring his partner Rockstar Spud into play. So an E27 there for that over the top entrance, um, if you know the song, you know what I'm on about. If you don't know the song, this will mean absolutely nothing to you. But over the top entrance from Joe Hendry and Rockstar Spud. And their match was a bit of a a job, basically two jobbers were against, or two enhancement talents, I hate using the term jobbers, just people who make them look good. But an extremely short match, Joe Hendry and Rockstar Spud defeated Jack Gallagher and Tim Wiley in 457 when Joe Hendry defeated Jack Gallagher by pinfall with an STO. E plus 33. Shame there was poor chemistry between Hendry and Rockstar Spud, so we won't see that again as a tag team. Jack Gallagher's improving performance skills. 
they may be enhanced enhancement talents at the moment, but we will like to give Jack Gallagher a push in the future. Tim Wiley, we'll build him up maybe as like a an average monster that can still do a bit of damage. Um, somebody like he has an ICW, like a threat, but not a massive threat. Overall, few negatives there, but it's to be expected. And the E plus 33, we'll take it. Next up in a match that had average crowd reaction and some decent in ring action, with Joe Coffey and Mark Coffey defeat Barry Griffiths and Big Rob in 1018, when Joe Coffey defeated Barry Griffiths by pinfall with a discus lariat. So, because we had no Jackie Polo, we just put the Coffey brothers together. E plus 35. Joe was off his game, as was Barry Griffiths. No skill improvements, but given. The baby faces the win here, uh, because these two are really just enhancement talents that just happen to be British. Next up in a match that had average crowd reaction but featured terrible wrestling, with Kaylee Ray defeat Viper in 12:22 by pinfall with a gory bomb. Kaylee Ray makes defence number three of our WAW Women's Championship title, an E plus 31 here. So it's okay, it's not great. Again, we need to build up some more female talents. It was either Viper or Sammy G. I mean, I just felt like Viper was a better option in this occasion, uh, but again, we need to build her up and we lost a point because of the two baby faces. Kayleigh has done it. Just in No More, she has survived a grueling contest with the Ever Game Viper. She struggles to get to her feet as senior official Thomas Cairns comes over to try and raise her hand and hand over her WAW Women's Championship. She finally staggers to her feet and raises the title to the fans. Viper gets to her feet and stares down Kayleigh Ray. What's going to happen here then? Kaylee Ray offers a goodwill handshake. The Viper stalls. While the crowd chant, yes, yes, yes. Viper accepts and the crowd goes wild and she raises the hand of the WAW Women's Champion. E plus 34, decent, just building up, you know, that these are two baby faces. Uh, they're both happy that they put on a good show for the crowd. Next up we've got a video hyping up Bram versus Noam Dar. Obviously the feud has been on for a wee while now. Where both men costing each other matches, disappoint E minus 21. But the match done okay and about the head average crowd reaction and some decent in reaction with Noam Dar defeat Bram in 1426 by pinfall with a surprise roll up. D minus 40, so I'm pretty happy with that. Bram's improving flying skills. Overall, a good contest, putting over Noam Dar, but at the same time, we're probably going to look to continue this mini feud between Noam Dar and Bram. Next up in our co-main event, in a match that had average crowd reaction and some decent in-ring action, Colt Cabana defeated Michael Dante in 7.13 with the Colt 45. E 42 basically having to use the Sumerian Death Squad as our main eventers heels here, because with nobody else. Otherwise I'd have put them probably in the tag match against the uh, Coffee Brothers. But as what it is, both of them have done a good turn here. Um, well, Michael Dante has, and I'm hoping that Tommy End puts on a spectacular performance in the main event. But the build up to the main event is a quick hype video, with the stipulation getting a WEW Heavyweight Championship match. The promo begins highlighting the Sumerian Death Squad's Tommy End and the work he's done here in WEW, plus stuff from Evolve, PWG and ICW to name a few. Next up in the video is his opponent, and this is after Tommy End has entered the ring. So we see highlights of the work of the one and only that should be Mickey Whiplash, not Mickey, Mickey Whiplash including his previous encounters against Tommy End and the SWA and various other companies. This promises to be a classic, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I've seen this match in real life, uh, twice in Mullero and the SWA. Stiff, uh, these two guys work very stiff with each other and uh, both of them have been very, very good contests. I don't know if it's quite the contest for an SWA uh, audience, but you know, it's a... It's a hell of a match. <laughs> Let me put it that way, a hell of a match there. If you're into that kind of stuff, you know, you'll really, really enjoy it. And in the end, they deliver a D plus 48, which is pretty good here. But uh, and about they had a good crowd and some decent in action. Mikey Whiplash defeats Tommy End in 21.56 by pinfall with another quick cradle. The match lifted the crowd. There were no skill improvements, but as expected, these two put on a hell of a show uh, that will give us, hopefully, a plus rating. After a, a brutal, stiff match, Mikey Whiplash has prevailed against Tommy End. He struggles to his feet. As Tommy End is helped to the back. Whiplash gets on the microphone and begins to cut a promo. He says, Did you see that? Do I have your attention now? You have just bear witness to the resurgence of Mikey Whiplash. For too long here in WW, I've been on the sidelines, 
waiting for my opportunity. Well, when others couldn't be here, Whiplash leads the way and shows you all how it's done. So Mastiff, Skrull, Grado, whoever the champion is, you're just in the way of the resurgence, the revival of Whiplash continues. So I saw a promo there at the end of the show, D51, so even that surpassed any expectations. But um, as people know, Mickey Whiplash is an absolutely fantastic wrestler, uh, an absolutely fantastic hand that um, ICW and the SWA both have. Uh, I think we probably should utilise them a lot more than have been, um, and that's the intentions. So overall, to increase our popularity in, the, in Scotland, because it's the only place it was shown, a D46, and hopefully we get a good rating, um, a good boost and stuff like that as well. Um, obviously, because of spectacular performance, Mickey Whiplash and Tommy End were the two that get praised for a, a good performance. So happy with that. And we carry on. So it'll be interesting to see how we do. And hopefully... Oh, well, that's a bit of interesting news. Vince McMahon has retired and has entered the Hall of Fame. On the same day that Jim Neidhart retires and the WWE give the big show a new contract. Yeah, but overall, feedback was good. Good show apparently. And it won many, many friends. Apparently with the our time show from... Um, Tuesday. Prestige at 18, momentum at 10, that's good. I don't know how much that'll go up. And it's just Chase Samuels, or Shah Samuels, sorry. Get rid of IPW. I'm going to quickly try and skip it for two days just so we can see the financial situation. Uh, as you know, obviously, we've got this deal going on at the moment with Ring of Honor. Um, and then once we get that sorted, you know, that's basically how we'll be able to fund bringing over so many talents coming in. So that's fine. Nothing really happening there on the Sunday. This will take us into the Monday, but it's easier because we're obviously with the show's being on a Friday, it gives us an idea how well we're doing financially and, and where we're coping. So let's have a look and see what happens. Nothing else majorly happening there. So straight in to our emails. We actually made a loss the first time, which is worrying. The prestige is still decent. Momentum has dropped one, so we've probably not won the regional battles. So second out of the, the three. It's not too bad, we just need to keep building up. Matt Seidel's completely stood in the Japan, so he might come back. Um, and hopefully we have the available for our next shows. So, finance over you look, we lost 13k. We made more money. Pretty considerable more money from ticket sales. Obviously we got our TV revenue, a little bit more from sponsors. Um, we didn't get any alliance money. Hmm. And as you can see for previous months, that's where all our money came from, this was our alliance. Okay. I don't know why that is, why we've not gained any money from Ring of Honor at all. Because both it's both as the alliance is both at zero. A quick look at that then. Ah, have they left the alliance? Don't ever recall that coming up, so for some reason. Ring of Honor have left their alliance, and hmm, interesting. So we'll probably need to try and form another alliance going forward, but that's disappointing then. So we're gonna have to watch how we handle it financially now, or we could end up seeing this 400k that we've got disappearing. But that's the good thing about the Ring of Honor stuff. We had Ring of Honor; they've given us a good balance to to work off, and it's up to us to try and make sure we don't overspend it. So we'll see how it goes, and um, if it comes to worse, our TV teams may see lesser talent. Well, not less of talent, I hate to say that word, but um, cheaper talent. But apart from that, thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, we'll probably look to have our next event on the third week of October instead of the fourth, just to make sure we've got all talents available. But overall, decent month for gaining prestige, and slowly but surely that momentum's building. It's going to take a lot more shows, but we'll definitely get somewhere in the end. As I say, thanks for watching guys, if you enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up. Hopefully I'll see you again for another WW Wrestling. Bye bye.